Frank Kemmerer. So I go up to Pat Carr, and they say to me, um, she's heard this before, and <laughs> a lot of times. Uh, I say, I'm seeing a red Kenworth. And they're going, I said, where are you going? What does that mean? We have red Kenworths. Yes. That's not going to get it for you. I said, no, what do you want? Said, it gets it for me? No, Barry. What you want is a green, emerald green, dark crap. And we will create a paint scheme for you. I said, I don't know. I see this red Kenworth. No, you don't. I said, okay. We know advertising is. This Kenworth in green is going to be spectacular on the screen. I said, okay, I'll, I'll find that. But I'm still seeing red. I haven't made a decision yet. I come home, home. I've now moved the offices to MGM. Big lot. MGM is an enormous lot. Huge parking lot. I mean, beyond stages and everything else. So I meet with my film editor and I say, emerald green or red? And he says to me, Barry, red is stupid. <laughs> I said, really? He said, yes, it'll blend into the background. You'll not see it. The emerald green, you'll see it on those long shots, on those slow pans. It'll pick up. The camera will pick up. And he's talking to a creative guy. Not a technical. Oh, so I'm nodding. Yes, yes, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. I still see red, but it, uh, he said, get the emerald green. So I called Kevin and I said, okay, I've been voted down. The emerald green is where it is. All right, two, three, four weeks later, we're writing scripts. They call me from some <coughs> baker's deal. They say, we're coming and we're bringing your trucks. I said, really? I'm excited. Okay. Be out in the parking lot at, you know, three o'clock. Okay. When those two trucks pulled in to the MGM parking lot, people came flying out of their offices at MGM to see these two trucks. And I said to myself, I made a good decision. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't I genius? I thought, what's on it? That's a good transition into you taking a break now. Do I need a break? Somebody talk about Sundance. Oh, whatever. No, whatever. And then you're going to come back. Oh, okay. See, what? This is my editor. Okay, but I'm not even near done. I know, but you're going to have to Okay, I'm going to. Other people can go. Yes. Okay, I'm ready. Yes, ma'am. We'll be back. Can I just ask a question? I'm not leaving. What's the time frame from the time they? Oh, it was probably a month or two, and 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 let me say this. When I say writing scripts, you can never start a show like this without having, you. we had an order for 22 episodes. You never could start this show without a minimum of six approved scripts in hand. Means everything is okay. You have an idea who your casting is, but the script per se has been approved. Everybody has signed off that needs to sign off on. So. I would say it was you know a couple of months into that process, and it's not that the thought about what the truck is going to be like. I had assumed Kenworth knew, but it, but I did not have a clue. Again, that paint scheme was brand new, made for the show, so I had never even seen anything like it. When it pulled in as bright and as gorgeous and as polished and as, I'm not kidding when I say. The, the uh, I think it's the Thalberg building at, at MGM. It's a three, four story building. People were pouring out into the parking lot. They blocked my space. But into the parking lot, they pulled into the parking lot and people wanted to go touch the truck. These are not truckers. These were film executives. They, that's what the, that's how right and that's okay. But, like but, oh, oh, excuse me. me. Okay, that is, this thank is, you. That's a very good Kenworth, uh, The Kenworth historian gave me these, sent me these. Thank you. So this is a picture of that truck before they made the modifications with S. Pruitt on the door and that kind of thing. So um, they sent those. That's what it looked like before they delivered it to Barry. Wow. They took some uh, publicity photos of it. So I don't know if this is Sundance or 05, the sister truck, but that's pretty neat. And that's what he saw when it uh, oh, it was came stunning. Up. Yeah, <laughs> stunning. Mark. Yeah. It was. It took my breath away in the way that 
I want to just, can I share this one? Oh, sure, of course. Okay, let me just share one yeah, thing about Mark, Mark and me. No, 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 no. No, no, no. When Mark and I get in touch, and it, it's, it's very emotional for me, but when Mark and I get in touch, no, please play it. Yeah, I want you to have it. <laughs> when Mark and I get in touch, he sends me this email of a picture of him under his family Christmas tree at five or six years old with a moving on hobby truck that has been set up <laughs> under the Christmas tree. It's a beautiful, it's a gorgeous picture. Christmas tree, Mark. There truck. it is. Wow. Yeah, that's exactly the picture. There it is. There's a moving on. There it is right there. All right. As, uh, and I don't know Mark Schultz. At this point, I've never met him. I know the name and so on. Then he pans down and there's a picture of him standing in front of that truck. And I said, God, there it is. I was so, that's it, that's the picture. And I thought, how moving that you could have some experience at five or six years old as a little child that you think, okay, that's it, that's finished, that's nice. You know, when you give your kid something, you say something to your kid, that's fine, but I'm done. Cut print, and you see that, you go, it was so emotional. I kept. I ran down to Heather. I don't know really where she was doing something. Cocaine. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you gonna get in trouble if you keep doing that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm in trouble already. Uh, I said, "Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this." That's how. Yeah. 